Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, Thursday, folks, uh, noon hour here. Ted Ralston in our Think Tech studios downtown Honolulu, overlooking, uh, looks like Kailua Bay at this point in time, or perhaps part of Waimanalo. Anyway, uh, our show, Where the Drone Leads, where we bring to our, our public the stories, information, uh, latest developments in the evolving world of drones, what it means to Hawaii, what it means to our people and our education system and our business. And this has been a really interesting week. We've had a lot of activity down at the Capitol and have that in association, including a meeting yesterday of the what's called the uh, Aviation Caucus, which is uh, a group of people involved in aviation, which now includes drones. We have with us today one of the spearheads behind that meeting. This is Ross Gerlich Bell. Ross from the Aerospace States Association. Yes. And uh, thanks for joining us on the show. First thanks time for having here. me. I want to have you back. Once once you're on, you're you're committed to make an annual <laughs> trek here. So you were part of the uh, aviation caucus meeting yesterday in the Capitol, dealing with the legislators uh, that are tangentially or directly involved in aviation, mm -hmm. and drones now fit into that picture. So aerospace states association is an interesting term that a lot of us aren't familiar with. And uh, it'd be really interesting to hear you talk about how aerospace or what aerospace states association does. How, second question is how it relates to drones and what that all means to us here in Hawaii. And I'll be glad to help you ask questions as we go through here. But talk about Aerospace States Association first, Ross, and okay. see where that goes. Well, the Aerospace States Association is basically a political association for the elected officials. So you have like National Conference of State Legislatures, you have the American Legislative Exchange Council, those are general legislative groups made up of the state governments or the state legislators. Aerospace States Association is specifically on aerospace issues for those elected officials. So our membership is the actual state governments, usually led by a lieutenant governor in each state. Um, and then we, we work with state legislators, obviously, with the lieutenant governor in states where there's no lieutenant governor. The state legislators take the lead or the governor gets involved. Um, and then we have our associate members, which are all the nonprofits, corporations, those that are interested in aerospace in general. So it's a government-centric Yes. Collection of people dealing with the emergence of I any issues in the aerospace domain, including drones. Exactly. And, and especially now that you have so many areas that are being delegated to the states from this federal level, where the states have a bigger role, um, that's where the chapter systems become evolved over the past several years, where the state governments are trying to figure out issues like drone policy to look at other states, what they're doing on drone policy in regards to also how the FAA is working on it. The same goes for commercial space, where that's becoming more of a state-centric area with policies, but you have the FAA with the overarching airspace control. And of course, anything that goes through to get to space has to fly. Um, and so we've, uh, the, the goal is the chapters will deal with anything that comes off the ground, as I say, except for basketball players. So. <laughs> Or punted footballs, as yeah, the case yeah, may be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is interesting. So, so we, you are providing, in effect, a service to the state governments that provides information exchange from other jurisdictions and from the evolving issues in the federal government that might affect how any particular policy aspect of aerospace is emerging. Correct. So, for example, you may want to find out how is California dealing with drones? What ah, way can so Hawaii we can, we can match call you up? We can, you can call us up and then what we do with the chapters is facilitate who might be the best contact in Hawaii to talk to. That goes for the state legislators in a great way, especially in states where you have turnover um, due to term limits and other things, that there's not, they have a quick point person to go to, whether it's the University of Hawaii here or it's a, a drone manufacturer or it's the Association for Unmanned Systems. We're able to help get that and coordinate that right away. So it's a one-stop shop for the the public officials that need to be able to make decisions on policy to find out if this is good or bad or if they should move forward. Um, and then it's good for the industry to be able to have that conduit to the officials to be able to say, we have something that's going on, this is gonna stifle creativity or this is actually something that's needed because we have problem systems that need to be corrected. There's, there's conflicts going on in the airspace that we need to make sure is corrected. Um, so that's what the, the facilitation of the information is Well, we for. can certainly use that here. We had, I think, in the last uh, three years, probably 40 bills that had something to do with drones, either regulating uh, registration or uh, operations or whatever it might have been. Mm -hmm. I think none of them have actually survived the tests of the legislative process because they had some federal uh, 
preemption issues or they had uh, landowner issues or they had a registration requirement which is already present in the FAA. They had something that made them not useful. So you provide a avenue of information that can straighten a lot of that out. So we write bills that, that are executable, in fact are kind of in parallel to what other people have done or other jurisdictions that have solved similar problems. Right, and, and that's where we've seen like Virginia, California, well not California, Virginia, California had a lot of bills like Hawaii. A lot, of, a lot of different ones on privatization or privacy issues and other stuff. And, of course, they had paparazzi issues in Hawaii and California that are quite different from other states. But Arizona went with a, pre, a state preemption over localities. Um, Virginia did something similar on that in order to make sure that not only do you have the states having their, their rights by the feds preempted, but that the states don't let all of a sudden you have multiple jurisdictions of this municipality is doing this, this one, this, and then you have the crossover and how do you deal with it. And so uh, there we're, we're providing the information to say, well, this is a model that seems to be working. It doesn't get you in trouble with the FAA. And then it makes sure that you're not having cities doing their own thing and creating a patchwork that would stifle an industry that may be able to evolve within the state. Okay. There's also changes evolving in the FAA on a, almost a daily basis these days, it seems. We have uh, uh, the one-hour call-up on uh, certificates authorization for public safety people now. We've got 107 and, and some variations that, that are coming forward. There's uh, an educational interpretation that we operate under at, at the university. So there's uh, quite, a, <clears throat> quite a range of things that are available today and more coming. So it's got to be really difficult for people who don't spend their 24 hours a day thinking about this to really understand what's going on. So do you have uh, publications or a website or something that, uh, that people can turn to to get information or submit questions to you? Or what's the process by which our legislature here interacts with you to get information? Usually it's through the chapter. Um, okay. And then the, we, we, if we get a call from a legislator or an email, we refer them to the proper association that has that detailed study. So we have a, a, a memorandum of understanding, say, with the AUBSI, the okay. Asso Association of Unmanned Systems International, uh, Vehicles International. Um, and so if there's something with drones, with them, we'll usually refer them to AUVSI because they'll have a study, they'll have a paper, they do the economic impact so that you can show the growth potential in the state, which industries are possibly the most uh, targeted for that growth with drone usage so the legislators can have that information. Uh, we'll contact other groups uh, depending on if it's a technical issue to contact a technical group um, or if it's an industry where they want to know what would it take to be able to start something up that's where we may be able to refer them to a company that has an interest in starting up something in the state. That's pretty cool. So this is about the third time you mentioned chapter. So that sounds like we need a Hawaii chapter of ASA. Do we have one? Um, we are hopefully forming one after okay. yesterday's caucus. Um, because the, aer yeah, the Aerospace and Aviation Caucus is considering merging, um, Hawaii seems uh, a great possibility for having the chapter structure because you have so many different entities. Well, well the whole state relies a lot on anything that <laughs> <Quite> flies. <totally. laughs> yeah. So it would be good to have a chapter that is dealing with all those different issues so that you're looking at drones, for example, is a great crossover between aerospace and aviation. There's always the conflict of where exactly do drones fit in that. Um, and so having the chapter would allow all those different entities to be there at the table and then providing to that caucus the information they need as they look to legislation probably next year. Um, this year's moving along already. But. So, so to, make a, to, to get a chapter going, what do we have to do? Well, we have the chapter charter. Uh, we've already provided that to several of the members to start considering. Um, we did have it before the lieutenant governor's, uh, uh, the previous lieutenant governor, um, and we're waiting to see who obviously becomes the, the, the permanent lieutenant governor for a four-year term in November. Um, and so we'll be asking that person also to get involved because we are made up of lieutenant governors as well. Um, but I know that the caucus is considering starting that up as soon as possible so that we can get things moving, build up events, be able to highlight what's going on within the state of Hawaii as far as, you know, air shows, drone trainings, those kinds of things, have a master calendar for the legislators to see all the stuff that's going on. And, and during the interim to be able to participate, if they want to go out and see what's going on, they can go to one spot, find out where that is. And, and not have to try to track it down through web searches or using the right term of unmanned system versus drone versus, you know, other uh, names for different well, this, this activities. This is super. I mean, Hawaii absolutely needs this, this national level connection. We've had uh, uh, Admiral Phil Kennel. I don't know if you know Phil uh, have, from NOAA out here recently talking to some of our legislators. We bring people in. When we have them available, we take them down to the Capitol and have a meeting. Mm -hmm. But it's a small meeting. It's one-on-one, -on -one, and it doesn't have the power of a caucus behind it. So this is a really important part of our future structure here. 
So uh, anything we can do at the university, obviously, uh, we're one of the test ranges that the FAA has nominated, and we need to be aware of what is uh, being developed uh, and is transmitted through the, uh, uh, the, the, the chapter. So is there a way that we can become part of that chapter as well? Definitely. All the associate yeah. members are allowed to be part of any chapter they want, multiple chapters in some cases. So the big companies, the Boeings, the Lockheeds, the Northrop Grumman's all have operations here. They are part of all the chapters. Um, and so they bring so their... So they're already in by virtue of their national... Mm -hmm. uh, so once company. you join ASA, you can be in as many chapters as you want. For ah, the, okay. So if you're a growing company and you see that you're growing outside of Hawaii to California or another state that has a chapter, Arizona or wherever, then you can automatically just join, be part of that chapter so you can see what's going on. And then once a year we have our annual meeting where the chapters get together and compare best practices of what's working to get the messaging across, what needs to be done for more activity. Um, there, we're even looking now for the chapters to participate in the National Aerospace Week up in Washington, D.C. that is put on in September. Uh, with the Aerospace Industries Association so that the chapters in that sense would be able to talk to the delegation from their state and be able to say this is what is going on in Hawaii and this is what we need to facilitate that development even more on the federal level. So whether it's working with FAA a little bit more or NOAA or NASA, these are the programs that we, we need the delegation to focus on because here we have all this information now to give you as far as where it could help the state and advance that way. That's really great because a lot of our a lot of our companies need secondary verification of information they're getting as well. For example, our agricultural, we have big agricultural mm -hmm. businesses here. We've got a lot of environmental issues. We've got uh, Pacific Command who has its needs and issues. We've got our local law enforcement and uh, police and fire uh, and and uh, public safety in general. So all of them need information, and they probably need it from several different sources before mm -hmm. they're satisfied they've got it right because it comes in such confusing packages. So this is a, a superb service that you guys provide. And uh, we've got a, a resolution out there, a joint resolution uh, uh, 143 that we hope to get passed this year, which actually requires Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism and the university and an unnamed law enforcement agency to put together a workshop, a permanent task force that does kind of like what ASA does and, and acts as a, as a channel to bring information in and actually take requirements that occur in the, in the fringe and push them forward as well. So it's a two-way street in terms of information exchange. And uh, uh, looking forward big time to having this ASA up and running. This is like a, been a, this is like a missing ingredient in our, in our thought process here. And in fact, we're, we're all struggling. How do we reach into that pot and get information? And you've provided that, uh, that functionality. Well, so that's what we're hoping it helps. So okay. the, the goal isn't to have it where it competes with anything that's going yeah. on. It's to assist at all the levels. And, and we're finding it's been very successful in the other states in helping to bring attention to issues and, and uh, resolve some conflicts that may have been out there, or misunderstandings, I should better say. Yeah, as far well, as. it's probably, it's, it's just different understandings. <laughs> right. Probably not misunderstandings. It probably the person different heard approach. what he thought was right. But exactly. It, it's, uh, there are so many different shades and filters on this information. It's, it's such a, it is frankly a very confusing situation. Mm -hmm. The other interest we have is in developing the local business functionality, not just the users, like agriculture, using it for agricultural uh, optimization and theft production, right. but, uh, but development of software, development of uh, 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 cluster and uh, 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 swarm operations and uh, Communication relays in times of disaster, when uh, delivery of subjects, uh, ocean sur ocean safety and rescue. We have so many cases of that uh, here where the functionality. So there's a development of the systems to do the work, and there's the application of them, and then companies that sit there and code software. Mm -hmm. We don't have Boeing Everett facility here, which is a very inspirational thing to see and gets kids going. But we sure could do the software. So that's and, and drones are all about. A lot of software. Yes. Especially the analysis, the analysis that comes from the imagery collected. So that's what we would like to build up. Anything you can do to help us see that picture would be welcome as well. Well, then that, that, that's something that, again, we'd provide you with the groups that are already yeah. doing that and say, hey, there's a beautiful state out here that's looking <laughs> to get into okay. that industry. Um, I know that we've helped on. One thing that's good about drones is that you have the imagination factor that cool. creates a whole bunch of different ideas that come into play, especially in places where drones can have so many life-changing possibilities because of the remoteness and how they can be used. And so I've worked with tribes in particular on drones 
um, where the kids are now starting to play with them and see what they can do because they can see that they can live where they want to live and fly them. And especially as they get to where over the horizon is going to be tested and stuff like that, all of a sudden you're talking agricultural operations and as you pointed out, all kinds of different little things that you would never dream of and the software is going to allow them to do because it's going to become more efficient. You'll get the geofencing to be accurate so you can do the programming and left and right best. <laughs> I got to tell you, next time you're out here, let me know on a week in advance. We can set up a meeting with some folks in the university and other in the scholastic domains. Everybody would be really interested in hearing you say that because that is such an inspirational frame of reference to put out there for the kids. And then uh, we also want to uh, talk about the aviation side of this and AOPA mm -hmm. and the relationship you guys have with AOPA. And I think we have somebody in the studio here from AOPA, which we'll come back to after our one minute break. Great. Do you want to be cool? me if so watch my show on tuesdays at one called out of the comfort zone i sang this song to you because i think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool and i want you to come watch my show where i bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier happier build better relationships and make your life a success so come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. This is the hey, how come he gets to go in? He's a service dog. Well, I could get a vest too. You're not even a service dog. He's trained to assist his owner. Well, I can do whatever he can do. Wow, did he just open the door? Yep. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that either. He's trained for over two years to become a service dog. Man, I wish I could be a service dog. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. It is still the noon hour on Thursday, folks. Ted Ralston here with uh, Ross Gerlich bell from uh, ASA, and we've been joined at the break by Melissa McCaffrey of AOPA, Amer the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. You are the Pacific and Western Regional Director. Thanks for jump coming on the show, Melissa. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, you were here for the uh, Aviation Caucus meeting also, which I thought was a really great meeting and really appreciate the leadership you and AOPA have put in. We have had Kathleen Swain on the program right. earlier, so we're digging into our AOPA friendships yeah. here. Anyway, uh, we heard a really inspirational uh, discussion from Ross uh, at the beginning here about uh, well beyond what you normally expect in a, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, politically oriented uh, uh, business evolution framework. Uh, he's talking about ins enthusiasm, inspiration, and such to the kids. Right. AOPA is picking that up too. AOPA yes. has picked up drones, which is absolutely incredible. I am an yeah. AOPA member. Okay, now. thank you. And uh, actually, I, I joined first in 1963, okay. and then I rejoined uh, recently here. So tell us about AOPA and how it fits with the ASA and yeah. and, uh, and 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 how you see the evolving issue of drones in our life. So AOP is a not-for-profit member-based organization. We represent uh, pilots and aircraft owners nationwide, over a thousand pilots and uh, aircraft owners in Hawaii. Over a um, thousand in Hawaii, you're yes. part of AOPA. Yes. How many of them are drone pilots, do you think? Um, that's a really good question. Probably our, not very many yet. Yeah, right? probably not many yet, or maybe they don't well, really year, realize we're that we have our we're right. all the drone guys, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, I think maybe we need to spread the word that we have a uh, drone membership and mm -hmm. represent drones, drone pilots. So, but I think as far as us fitting in um, with the aerospace folks um, and Ross, um, I think there's a lot of overlap in what we do. And um, so we, you know, Ross and I have worked in other states to kind of bring together aerospace and aviation. 
Um, and so we thought, well, why not do it in Hawaii? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. There's such an amazing history, a rich history of aviation and aerospace. And so it just makes sense to kind of meld them together. Um, and we're hoping to kind of revamp and mm -hmm. bring some energy into aviation and aerospace together. And drones are a great way to do that. I mean, you yeah. spoke very eloquently on that, and we all realize that drones are something really interesting to the kids. In fact, we're doing something on Good Friday here at the university. Mm -hmm. We're calling it Drone Boot Camp. One of our oh, directors, uh, Dwight uh, Takana, was putting that mm -hmm. together and inviting everybody in. And yeah. we'll have some kids will bring their own and such, and we'll start going through the process of uh, thinking about safety, thinking about FAA compliance, and then well, let's go have some fun. Well, yeah. So, but again, once again, uh, uh, when I was a kid and joined AOPA, I would have called it kind of a stodgy old organization of old Cessna 172 pilots. <laughs> and, and now it's turned into something is embracing drones. I just can't believe yes. that. It is so cool to see that happening. It's really cool. And I mean, I think with aviation and aerospace, um, you know, trying to get youth Mm -hmm. just involved and interested in aviation and aerospace, mm -hmm. that's our future, you know? And if we don't do that, mm -hmm. then where will we all be when we move on? And uh, so I think it's Some really critical. Move on a lot sooner than others, <laughs> I'll tell you that. But I think it's critical. And so we have like the STEM, and of course we hear A STEM, STEM, and um, all these different, uh, different, you know, a terms. Being arts. A being arts, and then I've also heard A STEM for aviation. Hmm. So that's something that we kind of have talked about a little bit, but um, but it's all the same idea. Well, how you does know? AOPA work? And we talked about chapters for ASA. We have to right. get one going here in Hawaii. Essential that we do that. AOPA is that run by state chapters also? So it's interesting because um, we have several offices. Um, so we have folks working out of D.C. and Frederick, Maryland, um, and in Wichita, Kansas. Um, and then also we have seven regional managers that represent um, the members on the state level. Um, so it's an interesting flow of information. Um, and then what's really very, works really well is we have um, our airport support network. And so at pretty much, we try it for every airport. And in Hawaii, every airport has um, a volunteer. And so we see them as kind of our boots on the ground. They're plugged in locally. And so they kind of feed the information to me in the region, and then I pass it along to the folks in you know, either D.C. or So how will you handle Maryland. the emerging drone business, which basically stays away from airports? I mean, AOPA yeah. is airport-centric in that regard, but drones are airport-acentric. So yeah. we, we need some, some way to figure out how to plug the emerging drone-ism here in Hawaii yeah. into you. Well, I think that it is the future, and you know, we're trying to promote safe integration. Okay. Um, and I think that's really key because, I mean, you can go to Costco and get a drone. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're everywhere. So I think we have to promote people being safe and responsible users of drones. Um, and that comes through education, definitely first and foremost. Um, and I think it's just really critical to make sure that people are educated about airspace and about rules at the airport and what to do and not to do, and also with FAA's guidance. You know, so, I think people don't even know what FAA is, some of the I folks that are buying drones. Probably right. So, so, yeah, we have a lot of work to do with education, I think. In, in, in regard to the education uh, that we can draw upon to help our legislators create good mm -hmm. law and such, we have the policy and doctrine coming through ASA. We can pick up mm -hmm. education and national trends in usage and national trends in uh, STEM or something like that through AOPA. Right. We could bring these two channels in together yeah. and have a really rich picture. Yeah. Uh, presented for our, our legislature. Yeah, that would be really smart. And okay. we're very lucky that Hawaii has some extremely supportive legislators mm -hmm. for aviation and aerospace. We have our caucus, our mm -hmm. aviation caucus, and um, we've talked about merging that with aerospace. And so we have some really key legislators that um, are very supportive of aviation. So we're very thankful for that. That's great. And so, once again, uh, my, my role at the university, uh, uh, running the unmanned aerial systems Mm -hmm. test range and mm -hmm. the functions we have there, uh, we need to tap into both streams and assist in getting that information over to our uh, legislature. As a question came up yesterday in the caucus meeting, uh, I think one of the two of you proposed to uh, the chair of the caucus that we need to figure out who all the legislators who have some tangential or direct relationship yes. to uh, aviation are, and it wasn't a list. 
In right. fact, uh, Senator Gahali said, hey, won't you make that list? Let, let me see it. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to know who they are, too. Yeah. So we have a long way to go in terms of getting it all hooked up and connected. Yes. And uh, well, see, one of, the, one of the beauties on that that a lot of people forget is every single legislator has some direct tangent to aerospace or aviation directly. Mm -hmm. And they just don't realize it most well, of the time. I was, if you said <laughs> yeah. that, I was thinking about yeah. that. It's true. It, 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 just the schools that are in their district. Yes. Yes. are part of that flow. The students that go to the University exactly. of Hawaii yeah. from their yeah. district they that are studying on aviation or aerospace yeah. stuff, and then the, the farmer that's using satellite technology. Yeah. They don't, a lot of them don't recognize where that's coming from and how that's important to their survival of the economy in their district. Is there some simple artifact or expression of what you do and what you do that can, we can flow to the legislature on a periodic basis? I mean, some, Getting them to read something that's more than a half a page in their busy time is tough. Why yeah. don't we do a, a monthly update or something like well, that? Well, right now, I know that we provide the state legislature every day a daily briefing to their email on aerospace aviation that goes out. I don't know if you guys have the same kind of daily briefing email yeah, that we, goes out. Yeah, we have a... Um, a newsletter that yeah. goes in, out in the region, and then we have what we call our e-pilot, which is a digital newsletter. So, I get that um, too. yeah, and it's it's wonderful. We have excellent writers, and um, so they do a great job of trying to get our messaging out. I wonder if we could take that somehow and sort of express it lo in localese, right? And uh, it, how it applies to us here, yeah, and make it available in a distilled form, mm -hmm. uh, maybe once a week or something like that would be. Yeah, we we'll talk about that. Uh, by mm -hmm. email when we're, when, we're, uh, when we're back to back to our normal jobs. This is exciting, the fact that we have this level of connection. Uh, we also have level of connection, as I mentioned, with Phil Kennel, who's at uh, ASTM and RTCA, Jim Williams, right. who is, um, you all know Jim Williams, I'm sure, XFAA. Mm -hmm. And so we're, I think we're finally getting to the point where we have a, maybe a, a adequate uh, body mass here of functionality that, that has fingers and everything and can help mm -hmm. us move forward in a positive way. And we really like to do that here in Hawaii. And uh, I got to tell you, I thank you so much for uh, thank your you. inspiration and for the support you guys thank give you at the operational level. Yeah. And uh, thanks for coming on our show. It's a short one. <laughs> Next time you're here, we'll do it again. <laughs> but uh, Melissa McCaffrey and uh, Ross Gerlich. Uh, there's another piece in the Gerlich. Bell. Bell. That's the, <laughs> the easy yeah. part. Uh, the bell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for coming out and talking to the legislature and being part of the Aviation Caucus and yet again inspiring us in cool new directions. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next week.